What is up YouTube? This is Red Leprechaun Gaming and welcome to the backstory of Veritas. The Pokemon D&D adaptation. Now, as I stated in the videos where I showed me drawing the map for this region, I have to plug who actually came up with the idea of this. It's from a YouTube channel known as Boarding Party. They often will... Yes, I am very advanced with my uh, movie editing, aren't I? Printing off screenshots and showing them to you. This is a screenshot of, well, basically how they start their videos. And they have... I believe they're on their second Pokemon campaign now. Now, for things such as... Uh, if you weren't aware, it is actually relatively easy to play D&D by yourself. And honestly, I'm just trying to right now get down how this is going to work because this is going to be quite different from your standard D&D in the fact that I personally, my character, is not going to be the one doing most of the fighting. His Pokemon are. This is basically... This uh, series of me figuring out how to play it is basically going to be me setting up the backstory for future playthroughs, many of which will likely take place in the Veritas region. I might play with other people, I might just do another session with myself, I do not know. Well, hi there, George. May I help you with something? I've got my own little Pokemon right here. Probably because I have dice in my hand and they don't know what they are. So, as you know from the previous two videos, our campaign starts in the Veritas region, which is a subtropical region surrounded by a vast number of islands and some marginally calm oceans. Our story takes place in the south of Veritas, in the small city of Coastborn. Coastborn is a fairly small town, very reminiscent to the towns in which you might start a Pokemon video game. The area on this part of the country is largely sparse forest interspersed with wide slots, swaths of lush grassland. In this area lives our protagonist, Rendman Alderson, a young man who is of age. We are not a 10 year old starting on our Pokemon journey. Our character is of age was living calmly in Coastborn, thinking about what he might want to do as a job someday. Earlier in this day, his father came home with a very small cat-like Pokemon known as an Eevee and proceeded to immediately give that Eevee a Dusk Stone. The Eevee evolved. Uh, I should mention... All trade evolutions and stuff like that, those are not a thing in this, in D&D Pokemon. They just evolve at the appropriate level. The, uh, this Umbreon was given to our young protagonist. And Rendman received his first Pokemon. Now, whether he would have gone on to live a normal life, have a normal job. I just almost dropped a D4 on the floor. Uh, that remains to be seen. You see, early one spring day, Coastborn was attacked. It was attacked by a group of criminals, a criminal organization unique to the Veritas region. Known as Team Reverence. See, Team Reverence, unbeknownst to everyone else, 
has made their headquarters on Southstrom Isle, a previously believed uninhabited island off the southernmost coast of Veritas. An island that is almost out of Veritas territory. It is small, and uh, it's a decent bit from the coast. They arrived there in ships one day, and due to Costborn's remoteness and its small size, the trainers there were no match for the grunts of Team Reverence, who proceeded to ransack the city. Many houses were destroyed, many of its people were killed, including young Redmond Aldenson's parents. But that is not why our character is setting out on his journey, no. Our character sets out on his journey because his young, presumably level one, Umbreon, is captured by Team Reverence and taken back to Southstrom Isle. No one knows why. It was the only Pokemon taken. And having no home remaining and only one thing to call his own, he set out to reclaim the Umbreon his father gave him. Rendman Aldenson is tall, with long brown hair, blue eyes. He wears a dark blue overcoat and cargo pants. And he sets out for the coast. Along the docks is a very special Pokemon. A dugong. Now dugongs are not entirely unique in the Veritas region. Nor are they very uncommon in the Veritas region. However, this particular dugong, even though it is a wild Pokemon, has made a habit of helping sailors when they bring their boats in and when they send their boats out. So, in the time of his need, young Rendman Aldenson, with the help of this dugong, is going to attempt a treacherous journey to Southstrom Isle to reclaim his Umbreon and his only link to his hometown of Coastborn. And with that, I am going to make my very first roll of the game. So I am going to actually have him make a survival check. His wisdom is plus zero, by the way. I had to do the uh, traits a little different because the the traits in our Pokemon game are less related to direct survival and combat and more to our character's personality. But he does not currently have a bonus to survival. He was just living in a small town. Hopefully my shadow doesn't go over the map too often. I actually kind of like this setup. My uh, camera is just sitting in the uh, the part of the dice tray that holds the dice before you roll them. And it just happens to be able to aim it perfectly right at the spot where our story's taking place. Now, it might be a little more difficult for me to record when he's, you know, traveling to different places. But, I suppose we should get on with our story. So, as I was saying, I believe I said this, if you want to play D&D by yourself, all you need... Is a d20. Because, in fact, many DMs randomize the encounters and events of a campaign using the d20. Which is what I shall be doing. Like I said, this is just because I have no idea how to play D&D Pokemon Edition. And, well, I'm going to try it for myself here. So he's going to make a survival check, which is based on his wisdom score of zero. Well, not not zero, but he's got a bonus of zero, okay? Which means his wisdom is ten, but whatever. 
You know how D&D &D works. It's been out for a quarter of a century. <laughs> oh, not bad. Not great, but not bad. So because it is spring, you're old and 11, by the way, the water is rather cold. And as you can see, the distance between the coasts by Coastborn and Selstrom Isle is actually quite substantial. So young Rendman does indeed have significant difficulty crossing this water. The water is cold, the current is strong, and the wind tears at his hair and his clothes as he crosses, holding tightly to the back of this dugong that has helped his people for so long, as it makes its treacherous journey to Southstrom Island. In fact, the distance between the coast and Southstrom Island is so great that by the time he gets there, it is late afternoon. The attack happened in the early hours of the morning when no one was ready. And yet, it has taken most of the day for him to get there. The dugong is tired, but it waits for him as he reaches the shore. Now we are going to roll what we would call a perception check. Not for him, but for the inhabitants of Selstrom Island to see if they see this seal dropping a small child off on the shoreline. Well, I guess 18 isn't really a small child, and he's tall for his age, but whatever. Well, it looks like things are not in our young man's favor. For as he arrives on the island and the dugong sinks beneath the waves to rest, he hears a shout. Someone has seen him arrive on the island. It appears Team Reverence is not quite as incompetent as certain other teams with R's emblazoned on their chests and talking cats that commit felonies. So what are young Rendman Olsen is going to do is he is going to make his own perception check, which he actually is proficient in. Ooh. 16, not bad. So he surveys the forest coastline of Selstrom Island. The shore here is ragged. Dark sand, sharp stones, and an embankment that has been pounded by waves for centuries. The trees have moss and vines over most of them, as this far south, the winters are incredibly mild, and the island, due to its size and location, is often bombarded by storm systems. As a result, there is significant plant growth, Although, curiously enough, very few Pokemon are visible. Even the forest seems eerily quiet, as though they're afraid to be seen by Team Reverence. And our character is going to run into the forest and attempt to hide, which I believe is a stealth check which he gets a plus two to woo that would be a 19 that was good it was close it so if you look here on the dice the three is right next to the 17 and it like almost went to the three but nope he goes into the forest he dives into a patch of ferns and Team Reverence appears on the scene. Looking much like your typical evil team from the Pokemon universe, Team Reverence has these gray overcoats, relatively short, with blue undertones along the edges, almost like trim. Unlike Team Rocket, they do not have a simple letter on their 
clothes, but almost like an anagram. Is that what it's called? They have reverence, like, stenciled on their shirt as though it were, like, a company or something. And let's see how observant our people are. Ooh. They did not do so good on the second observation. So, um, one second. Let's grab a D4. Ooh. Four resurrect. Four team reverence grunts walk out onto the beach and look around. They saw something come up on the shoreline, but because of the waves, obviously footprints aren't going to be any good, and obviously the sharp rocks do not leave the best footprints. For those of you who haven't caught it, I'm basing a lot of the description of Southstrom Isle off of several of the coastlines present in the Great Lakes area. So, these grunts will... They failed their perception check compared to his stealth check. So what they will likely do is head... So he's on the shoreline right here, somewhat inland, hiding. And they are going to go this way down the coast and continue searching. Oh, wow, they do... They did even worse the second time. Team Reverence, despite having spotted something appear on the beach, are continuing along the beach line in search of whatever it was. I would have had them find him, but uh, they are not doing very well on the rolls right now. I mean, they are grunts. So, I haven't even written up like a... Uh, like a character sheet for a grunt because they're such a minor like inconvenience to main characters in most stories. They're the they're the common enemy, shall we say. So having been here, he is going to would this be what would this check be? I mean I guess he already made a stealth check. So he is going to continue stealthing. Now that they've walked past him further into the center of the island. Now, right around this point is where the docks are, which is precisely why he's not there. And up from the docks leads a surprisingly well-maintained road. And this road leads up a hill to a very fancy-looking facility. And it is going to take probably a good hour for Rendmond to make his way there. So I am going to actually have him perform a survival check to make sure he traverses the island correctly. Because islands in the middle of the ocean tend to be fairly dangerous. Ooh. Okay. So. Yeah, let's try this again. Okay, young Rendmond is about to take a step forward when he hears something. That something is breathing. It's not from behind him. It's from directly in front of him on the ground. And as he looks, right where he was about to step is an Arbok. It is absolutely massive, twice his length, with a massive hood. It's darker colored than your average Arbok. And it is dozing quite contentedly, with the bulk of its body concealed by a large bush. Let's see if it notices him. Ooh, it is not very observant. It is, it is past the fuck out. He can safely step over it and continue on. He had a really high self-check. So, I, t I showed you he rolled a 17. His bonus to that... I believe it's a 3, isn't it? Yes. So, is it? No, it's a 2. So that was an unnatural 19 for him in stealth. He, he's 
He's very sneaky. He's a sneaky boy. Although I did, I don't think I gave him a bonus to, uh, oh yeah, it's just his dex bonus, because he's not proficient in it. He, uh, for reference, he is per, stiff, he is per, uh, he is proficient in perception, medicine, insight, and deception. The rest of his stats, like charisma, wisdom, are bonuses similar to normal bonuses. He only ha he doesn't have proficiency in any of the main things. He only has the uh, skills. The rest of them were just, you know, rolled the way you typically roll for your characters. Skills. So, uh, not skills. Like strength, charisma, you know, when you roll a d20 to see how good they are. He actually does not have the best constitution or wisdom, which could be problematic if, say, you get bit by an Arbok. Um, so what he is going to do, sneak up to this facility. It is very large. It's on a hill. It's made out of this gray metal. He hasn't seen anything like it. It looks fairly futuristic. This metallic substance doesn't provide any handholds. And there are no windows to be seen in the facility, which means only one thing. I have finally dropped the D4. <laughs> Thankfully, it didn't roll very far. Okay. He is going to have to get in. Now, there's a problem with that. There's a door nearby, but that door has a keypad and a place to swipe a card, which means our young Renvin Aldenson is going to have to take out a Team Reverence Grunt without any Pokemon. So we're actually going to start off our campaign here with our young hero Fighting someone fist to fist. So he's going to make... I'm going to have to stop dropping these dice. There we go. So he is going to make another stall check. Ooh. That was... Put a stall again. That was a seven. <laughs> so let's see how this first grunt that comes by... Observes him. Ooh. Just barely higher. That's a 10. Okay. There goes the D4 again. I have this bad habit of when I'm telling the story of tossing the dice back and forth between my hands. Which is fine in person. But uh, if I keep dropping the D4, it's not going to be fine. So I'm going to try and keep those on the uh, table. So the grunt does see him. So what is going to happen? Our character is going to attempt to rush him and punch him in the face. Which, I believe that'd be a straight strength roll, because I don't believe he is proficient in punching. Ooh, that's not going to do it. The grunt dodges out of the way. However, the grunt, seeing that it is a lone child... Okay, let's see how smart this grunt is. The answer is not very. This grunt, seeing that it is a lone 18-year-old who has no Pokemon, is going to take out his Pokeball, and he is going to toss out... Ooh. Out of this Pokeball comes Eradicate. Eradicate, seeing, okay, we, we should probably roll initiative. Oh, no. I rolled for the Eradicate first. The Eradicate got a nat 20. The Grunt, it's a 6, and our young protagonist gets a 4, so he goes last. Okay. So the Eradicate is going to move up to him and attempt... A bite attack. Ooh, that is just barely not enough. Elidor, or not Elidor, Rendmond 
dodges as I drop the D20 on the floor. The grunt is just going to sit back and watch because this is a this is an unarmed 18 year old fighting a rat the size of a dog. So what is our character going to do? He is going to do a perception check, which is actually pretty good. He finds a stick on the ground and proceeds to attack the radicate with a stick and he crits it. Okay. He is not proficient in hitting something with a stick. So, we'll just add his strength to this. Ooh. That is an eight damage. The Raticate takes eight damage as he whacks it in the face with a stick. The Raticate, being pissed off at this, is going to attempt... To bite him again. Ooh, that is absolutely terrible. That is a three. Okay. So, Radicate bites and misses again. The Grunt is now slightly more concerned. Let's see if he's concerned enough to radio for backup. Well, that's a four, so no, he is not. <laughs> okay. Back to. So now it's Elidor. Not. Fuck. Rendman. Rendman is going to... Ooh, he is going to swing and miss as the Raticate nimbly dodges this wave of the stick. He has only done eight damage to this thing. And now it's back to its turn. Ooh. It almost got him. It is very quickly learning how Rendman is trying to fight it, and it is not happy with it. The Grunt, being still very stupid, is not calling for backup. You just can't find good help these days, can you? Okay. Attempting to whack with stick. There we go. Okay. He hit max damage again. That's another eight damage with the stick. He is beating Eradicate with a stick, and it is working. Okay, the Eradicate, being pissed off, is now going to go for a tackle. Wow. How is this Eradicate rolling that low? That is that is not enough. For reference, Rendman, his AC is 13, because he is quite agile, being tall. And uh, he is also, um, you know, wearing the thicker clothes and stuff. And, yeah. So, that is not hitting him very well. For reference, in D&D, a lot of what, uh, a lot of the AC is not just based on your arm, physical armor, but it's based on size. So, the Radicate is going to attack him, and this time it is going to hit. Which is not good news for him. Ooh. Renman loses half of his hit points as this Raticate bashes him in the fucking ribcage with its head and knocks him to the ground. He is now prone. I'm afraid that's going to have to be it for the first episode. I don't know with my improved memory if my phone is still going to break up the episode, so I have to do it myself. So I'm going to end this first episode here, and we shall continue... Actually, I'm going to do one more thing before we go. I'm going to roll and see how bad Lee got injured. Rendman has broken ribs. I shall see you in the next video.